Hey, how's it going, folks? This is Gil with uh, Tanglewood uh, Homestead, uh, Tanglewood Heritage Farm, uh, Tanglewood Croft Heritage Farm. Sorry, this is our first video, as you can tell. <laughs> Get a little tang tangled there. Um, we wanted to take this one and make an introductory video for you, uh, kind of give you a walk through of the property, a little bit of a tour, if you will. Um, it's going to be pretty informal, um, but we just wanted you to see what it is that we're up against. Um, I say up against the challenges that we face. Uh, and I'm going to start down here at the edge of the property, um, close by the house. Uh, just And then just walk you through and let you see why we call this the Hill and Holler Homestead, because that's pretty much all there is to it. So let me turn you around here and so you don't have to look at me, but while I'm thinking of it, go ahead and hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. We'll have more videos coming your way and we could really use the help. So let's get to it, shall we? So, all right, here we are at the edge of the property. Uh, you can see a marker right there. Um, that was from where I walked the property using a, an app to find the exact property line it runs on up through there um, the property is almost 20 acres and it lies pretty much in a rectangle uh, as you can see and uh, this area up here across the creek that you can see and i'll give you another shot of it later from another angle this area is an area we are talking about when we get to the point where we're going to have pigs that's where we're going to put them um, it's ma mainly hillside it's not quite so bad steep uh, as other parts of the property that you'll see in a minute um, meanwhile down here we have we have a nice creek let me get over here show you some of it I've been doing some work in here as you can see cutting down the small brush i intend to come back in here with a chainsaw get some of these bigger things out of the way um, and leave some of these really huge trees that we have for essentially silvo pasture now we have ducks three different breeds we have uh, the uh, silver apple yards the Anconas and the Welsh Harlequins. They're all dual purpose breeds. Uh, and we've been letting them free range. They still are free ranging. They really love this creek. There is a pool right down there and I can show you a little bit of it here in a minute <coughs> that uh, they really love. But they've been kind of staying away from it here lately because something, and we suspect the bobcat, has been coming out of these woods getting them. So, the thing is, down here, this creek has wandered over the years. It's wandered all over this area. So, the ground down here is saturated. Um, at one point, right in this area, where you can see just a little bit of greenery there, my mom tried to have a garden. But, I mean, as you can see, with all these trees... Um, and just to give you an idea, here's the little garden spot. And that's roughly east in that direction. Um, the problem is, obviously, there's just not going to be enough sun down in here for one. And the ground is really saturated. Well, one of the things we're doing is permaculture. And permaculture says, turn a problem into a solution. So what we intend to do because we are a heritage farm and the idea behind having our heritage breeds is we pick dual purpose breeds that are also um, on the critical list on the livestock conservancy sorry about that trying to do a little adjustment there um, 
so we want to be able to separate the breeds. So what we're going to do in this area is right in here, we're going to put in some duck housing and we're going to slowly build three pins and the fence will go all the way across the creek there to the other side. We'll divide it up into at least three paddocks. We're probably going to add some geese as guardians. And the ducks love it down here. It'll give them shade. It'll give them some overhead cover from aerial predators if we keep a lot of these bigger trees in. Um, so we think that'll, that that's a good solution to this problem. Uh, we can probably put a house there, house there, house there. That'll give them all access to the creek, but keep them separate so we can keep them. They're just running together at the moment. Uh, we have a little small house we're housing them in just at night. It really doesn't give them enough room, but it's one we got off of a guy. He built it out of pallet wood, and he had goats in it. Um, but as you can see, we've got a really good creek to work with here. We've got some land to work with. Um, but as I'm going to show you in a minute, the other problem is, out of the 20 acres, I don't know, I would hazard guess that we're going to get 10 tops we can work with, because, I mean, you're even, you're starting to see it now. We've got a lot of hillside, steep hillside, bluff, lots of brush to clean out. Uh, our big thing is on this place, we don't want to take out the woods entirely, so we want to make silver pasture. Um, but that means learning how to pick what trees to take out and which ones to keep. And there's the ducks in question. I've never been around ducks before till we got these guys. And I say I really like them. I think uh, for me, Ducks would be more of a gateway drug than chickens would if we were starting it over. This is where we keep them right now. As you can see, it's not very big. This is compost, letting it compost. We feed fermented feed on all of our stuff. Um, we work right around here. The ducks like to follow me because they think I'm going to feed them. Here's the first of the bluffs that I'm talking about. Uh, the rest of it stays bluff down through here. Um, again, we've got nice creek. I have a really good pool right here. At times I have thought if I could dig some of this out, put in some retaining walls, you can see, maybe you can see there in the video where I've been working. But that's a really steep bluff there. There's really not much you can do with that. It's just entirely too steep. But the other problem is a lot of our other operations we want to do up there. And though so we've got a lot of water down here. And as you can see, stuff washes down in the creek. That's something we have to keep an eye on. We've got a lot of water down here. We don't have a good way to get it up there. Um, I've studied different things, ram pumps and such a lot. And of course, ram pumps aren't going to, they're not going to pump up a grade like that. Um, from everything I've found out anyway, I've not been able to see one in operation. So it's hard to say for sure. This is the house we live in. It's a log home. My mom and dad's retirement home. And as you can see, we have lots of cleaning up that needs done. This is just a good look. This creek can get up higher course when we have rain events it's not too bad though where we used to live it could get up and you couldn't leave the house 
So this here, if you give it a little bit, there's not as near as much drainage into it, but it's definitely a good resource for us to use. <clears throat> this is the old duck pen, uh, but they really turned it bare, wore it out. So we opened it up. These are, all three of these breeds are very good at browsing, foraging for themselves. So we wanted to let them out and let them forage. But everything is a work in progress. Uh, stuff to clean up. There's stuff left over from building the house. The house is about 20 years old. Uh, stuff left over under the porch. We're going to clean that up. Put lattice up to block it off. Uh, we're hoping to bring a deck down off of that porch out into the yard. And there's more of the bluff. Just unusable land. At least in any conventional sense. Uh, what you see there, that's our quail hutch. We have jumbo browns at the moment. We got this design from a channel called Slightly Rednecked. And uh, he has. I like to put leaves in there with them so it feels a little more natural for them. They haven't had any in several days. This side, show you how this works over here. This is enclosed so they can get in out of the weather and they have sand. They can use it for grit and they can just scratch around and be inside it. We hatch these ourselves, had to pull a lot of roosters out of them. This area, we see this insulation board line, was originally a dog pen. We have two pocket pits. We hate keeping them pinned up. But if we don't, they run off. Uh, this was dog pen. I've done some cleaning up, taking the fence down and such. And then it was rabbits. You can see this dark, rich dirt here. Uh, one of the pens was here, and then we had a small one with some meat rabbits here. They were all meat rabbit breeds. Um, we bought the rabbits to try out rabbits and see if that's what we would like. If we would like doing them, we're going to get back into the rabbits. Um, ultimate goal on this farm is to have rabbits, quail, chickens, which we, we have the chickens, we have the ducks, we have the quail. We want to get the rabbits. We hope to do pigs. Uh, we're looking into Gloucester old spots at the moment. Uh, could possibly do mule foot because that's the only American breed and they're really good at foraging and finding things that other breeds of pigs won't find. This little area here was sort of an experimental small garden plot last year. Got a few things out of it, but again, there's just entirely too much shade once these trees get foliage on them. This is the other edge of the property here at this fence line. You can see the water gate there. Makes us a little envious. You can see down through there that field. That's not ours, unfortunately. Uh, I have permission to hunt on it. It's a, it's in trust. There's quite a bit of land up there, open land I can hunt. Deer cross down in that area uh, quite a bit. And you can see that feeder kind of through the leaves there. See if I can get it up. Right there. They like to cross down there around that feeder. Um, so, oh, and this is our driveway. Hard to maintain. We don't have a tractor, 
any piece of equipment that I can use at the moment. Take care of it so it can be a challenge. Um, so yeah, the dichotomy we've got going on here is we've got good dirt down here, um, but no sunlight. And up top we can have the sunlight, but it's real flinty, drier dirt. Uh, we got a few things, good things going on here. You see that ribbon on that tree? That's a pawpaw tree. So we're going to have to be careful what we trim out of there. Over against this stump, we had to have trees taken out. There's elderberry growing, a little bit of elderberry growing around in the stump. You can't see it this time of year, of course, but we're going to try to put in some kind of mulch or something and a protective barrier so when I mow, and you can see that's one of our cats right there. For some reason, she's following me around today. We've got all this wood lying around. I need to get uh, some way to move it so we can take it up top. We're going to have garden spots up top, and we're going to have raised beds, and we're going to use hugel culture. If you're not familiar with hugel culture, you put wood in the bottom, preferably stuff like oak and that sort of thing. And this is some building materials we've got. <coughs> and as it rots, <coughs> You put the oak in the bottom, you put branches and leaves on top of that, compost, dirt, leaves, and as it rots, it keeps everything warm, it extends your growing season a little bit, and of course as this rots, it forms more, you get mushrooms growing out of it, and the idea is that our age, we want to make things as easy on ourselves as possible. So that's a tour of the bottom part of the farm. Uh, if you give me a minute, I'm going to take you up top. And I'll show you what we're facing up there. And give you a shot that is a little better shot of... So you can see what kind of a drop. Because I know it's really hard to see slope on camera. But I think this will give you an idea. So give me just a minute and I'll be right back with you.